Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we're going to explore an interesting topic that combines chemistry, scuba diving, and bubbles. Yes, you heard it right, bubbles. We're going to delve into the fascinating world of gas laws. Then we'll investigate two gas laws, first Boyle's law and then Charles's law, and how they apply to scuba diving. Let's dive in. Gases have three main properties, pressure, volume, and temperature. These properties are interconnected and a change in one often results in a change in the others. Imagine a balloon. If we blow air into it, there are more air particles, so the pressure increases. The higher pressure causes the balloon to expand. That's an increase in volume. If we heat the balloon, the air inside expands again, increasing the pressure and the volume. If we cool it, the air contracts, reducing the pressure and volume. The gas laws best represent the relationship between gases' pressure, volume, and temperature. All of the gas laws apply to our scuba diving journey, but let's look at two of them for this lesson, Boyle's Law and Charles's Law. Starting with Boyle's Law, this law states that the pressure and volume of a gas have an inverse relationship when the temperature is held constant. In simpler terms, if you decrease the volume of a gas, its pressure will increase because the particles are closer together, and if you increase the volume, then pressure decreases as the particles move far apart. Now, where do bubbles come into this? When scuba divers exhale, they release air from their lungs into the water as bubbles. This air is at the same pressure as the surrounding water pressure. So when the diver exhales a bubble, the gas inside is under high pressure due to the surrounding water. As the bubble rises towards the surface, the pressure decreases and so the volume of the gas will increase. As a result, we see the bubbles expand as they rise. The deeper a bubble is formed, the higher the initial pressure will be. So a bubble formed deep in the water will end up much larger at the surface than a bubble formed near the surface. Now we've got the basics, let's have a go at graphing this relationship. For Boyle's law to work, we'll assume that the temperature remains constant throughout the dive. Let's say our bubble starts at a depth of 30 meters, which equates to approximately 405.3 kilopascals of pressure with a volume of one liter. Let's whip out Boyle's law to help us calculate the change in volume of the bubble as it moves towards the surface. Remember, our numbers here refer to the starting pressure and volume represented by P1 and V1, and the final pressure and volume represented by P2 and V2. Let's go through the process of calculating the volume at a depth of 20 meters. Our P1, or starting pressure, is 405.3 kilopascals, and our V1, or starting volume, is 1 liter. The pressure at 20 meters, or our P2 value, will be 301.3 kilopascals, leaving us with an unknown V2. Some quick rearranging to get V2 by itself, and we get a value of 1.345 liters for our V2 or final volume. Great. So we can do this same process at 10 meters, and finally at sea level. So the volume of the bubble increases from one liter at 405.3 kilopascals to 1.345 liters at 301.3 kilopascals. 2.013 liters at 201.3 kilopascals and 4.000 liters at sea level, which has a pressure of 101.3 kilopascals. Putting our data onto a graph, we can clearly see that the volume and pressure are inversely proportional, as described by Boyle's law. This is a great real world application of one of the gas laws, but remember, all of the gas laws can be applied to the world of scuba diving in some way. So let's look at another one. Enter Charles's law, which states that the volume of a gas is directly proportional to its temperature, provided the pressure is kept constant. But wait a minute, we know the pressure changes with depth, right? That's right. But to illustrate Charles's law, let's assume a hypothetical scenario where a bubble is kept at a constant pressure while its temperature changes. According to Charles's law, if you increase the temperature, the volume increases, and if you decrease the temperature, the volume decreases. In the ocean, the temperature can change with depth, impacting the size of the bubbles from our scuba diver. So let's have a go at graphing some data to show this relationship. Let's first represent Charles's law as V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2, where V1 is the initial volume, T1 is the initial temperature in Kelvin, V2 is the final volume, and T2 is the final temperature, also in Kelvin. Now, let's assume that the initial temperature of the gas when the bubble is released is about 11 degrees Celsius, or 285 Kelvin, and the volume of a bubble at this temperature is 1 liter. Then, using Charles's law, we can calculate the volumes at the other temperatures. First, we need to do some fancy rearranging to get our unknown variables, V2, by itself. 
Awesome. So at 286 Kelvin, one liter over 285 K multiplied by 286 Kelvin gives us 1.0035 liters. We can do the same calculation with different temperature values, such as 287 Kelvin and 288 Kelvin, which gives us volumes of 1.0070 liters and 1.0105 liters. Sure enough, by popping these values on a graph, we see a directly proportional relationship showing us that as the temperature increases, the volume of our bubbles also increases. How cool is that? Let's wrap up there with a couple of questions. First, how can gas laws explain bubbles from a scuba diver? Gases have three main properties, pressure, volume, and temperature. Our gas laws represent the relationship between these properties. These properties will vary depending on the depth of a scuba diver, so the gas laws can explain a lot about the behavior of bubbles being released. Next, which gas laws can explain the relationship between the ocean's pressure and the bubble's volume? Boyle's law states that if the pressure decreases and the temperature remains constant, the volume of the gas increases. Finally, which gas law can explain the relationship between the ocean's temperature and the bubble's volume? Charles's law states that if temperature decreases and the pressure remains constant, the volume of the gas decreases. See you next time!